Hello and welcome back. Recently, a very old game has uh, been released to Steam, or at least a sort of source port of it. Uh, this is called Free Stars, the Urquan Masters. Uh, for sort of licensing reasons, it's not got the original name it had, which was Star Control 2. Uh, this is the first game in the Star Control series that had a kind of story mode. Uh, the previous game was more of a kind of... Um, how, how would I put it? It was more of a kind of strategy game, was a kind of strategic layer and then like a ship melee mode where the combats were resolved. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of more of a cross between that game mode and a kind of more of an adventure game. Uh, but you'll see as we play through it, there's a lot of like... Um, there's a lot of games that it's clearly influenced following on. And I would say this has actually been a pretty influential game uh, for me to have played uh, quite a while ago now. Uh, it's actually one of the reasons for my username, which we will see in the fullness of time. But without further ado, this is Free Stars the Urquan Masters, and we will be playing through the story mode now. And here we go. Um, honestly, the soundtrack of this game is just wall-to-wall -wall bangers. <laughs> so, uh, we are in the uh, kind of the overworld map, kind of galaxy map. Um, uh, we'll see a few things where I think games like Mass Effect and a few various other games have clearly been influenced. As we fly around, you'll notice that actually there's a kind of non 
I don't know why I'm saying non-Newtonian, it's very Newtonian. There is a Newtonian physics kind of drift thing, so actually the more we speed up, and if we want to change our speed, uh, we, we have to consider the velocity we're already moving at, which is pretty neat. Makes it control a bit like a truck on, on ice, but then that's how space travel would probably feel anyway. And there we go, got an encounter. Attention, interloper. Heed this recorded message. This drone vessel speaks with the voice and authority of Urquan. You are trespassing within Urquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached for any reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions and is therefore deemed to be independent. This is not permissible. Only subservience shall be tolerated. This drone now leaves to inform the Urquan of your transgressions. You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience will be punished. I, uh, I really appreciate the uh, the energy there of like, welcome interloper, please wait for someone to attend to your destruction. Uh, so yeah, we're going to kind of not take the Urquan at face value there, and we're actually going to fly towards the orbital station that we were told not to approach. Um, so yeah, just take a moment to get there, we can actually see the Earth has kind of got a red glow around Attention it. Attention unidentified space vessel, I am Starbase Commander Hayes of the slave planet Earth. Our hyperwave broadcast is extremely weak, situation critical, energy cores exhausted, scanners and deep radar are non-functional. We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Repeat, are you the resupply vessel? Okay, so we've got a couple of options for the dialogue there. We can say, no, this is a Starship Vindicator, but we stand ready to assist you. Uh, yes, this is the res resupply vessel. What do you need resupplied? And then Slave Planet, Hierarchy, resupply vessel. What on earth is going on here? Or what is going on here? So I think that's what we want to know. Look, I don't know who you are or why you're here, but right now the only thing I'm worried about is saving the lives of 1,900 men and women aboard this Starbase, and right now you're our only hope. I can't keep the transmitter on too much longer. We need the power for heat and air, so if you don't have any radioactives on board your vessel, please get some and bring them back here before it's too late. Okay, so we have a mission there. Uh, we, we might ask where can we find those radioactives. The fastest way to get radioactives in this system would be to land on Mercury and scour the surface for deposits of radioactive elements. But be careful, Mercury is a pretty inhospitable place. Watch out for earthquakes and those high temperature areas. Right. So uh, we've got our kind of first little quest or first little mission to do on behalf of Commander Hayes. So let's get let's get heading to Mercury. Thanks. I'll make sure to mention this the next time I talk with our masters. I'm sure they will reward you. Indeed, I'm sure they will. So we're gonna we're gonna leave sort of the Earth orbit. And actually, while I while that's going on, I'm gonna pause and. I am going to, so we can see the largest star map there, we can see our uh, ship manifest, cargo, so at the moment we don't have any cargo on us, we've got devices that we can pick up as the game goes on, and also our various ships uh, that are in our fleet with us. Um, we can also, is it under settings, yeah, we can actually change our name, so I'm going to be Captain Snow, and our flagship, which I'm going to say can be the friendship. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, uh, with that all done, let's actually do a quick save as well. Uh, we're going to do want to do quite a lot of saves, I believe, as as we go through this, uh, because there is no auto save feature. So let's exit that. Let's and let's head on out to Mercury, which is the first planet in the solar system. My very easy method. There we go. 
and yeah, we'll definitely see uh, the next screen. Definitely see some uh, something that's kind of been an influential view in later games too. Uh, very, this is very reminiscent of a lot of games. I, I'm thinking Mass Effect specifically, but a lot of games that have like a planetary scanning feature. So we can, you can scan in things individually. We should probably just run an auto scan. Um, but I'll probably highlight bits on the screen because I can't point to them with my mouse. So I'll probably highlight bits in sort of post. But actually, the, the very slit different categories here, like Tectonics Class 3, that's actually warning us that when we land, we've got some stuff we're going to have to reckon with. Uh, the temperature, we're going to have to take into account because they're going to be, basically be firestorms. And then we're going to dispatch a lander, uh, which will be able to go down and harvest some elements. Um, we're going to want to focus on the more colourful ones. So the reds, the golds, and we'll see different element colours later. The, um, the grade ones are just sort of standard, very common deposits. And actually, one of the interesting things about this game is if you uh, over, over farm or over pick up the lower tier elements you actually kind of almost get yourself into a deficit you're effectively wasting cargo space uh, on each run because every time we go down and you'll you'll see the counter in a second we lose a unit of fuel to land on the planet so we're going to do that first to get the i believe the oranges are the radioactives and very quickly we're going to see some flames yep uranium so we've got a bunch of radioactives. Let's try and get some other minerals while we're here, though. Let's uh, fill up our stores. Now, we can see our stores are actually filled up. I'll highlight it, the mineral thing. It's completely filled up. So we're going to evac before we lose any crew members. Uh, let's. So we've, we can exit there. And we can navigate back to the sort of star map. And we can head back to Earth. And yeah, you'll, you'll be able to see the uh, fuel counter has gone down. You can actually see how many landers we've got as a little icon just above that. It's hard to see as well. Okay, and then we can drift our way to Earth. And then we can drift our way. I'm actually going to just pop by Earth and show you what that currently looks like. I think it's mentioned that it's been slave shielded. Uh, we'll find out more about what that means as the game goes on. But yeah, you can see the kind of big pulsing red shield and... If we wanted to scan it, we can't. We can't dispatch anything down. It's completely isolated from the rest of the universe, in a sense. So let's go to the uh, let's go to the starbase. Did you find any radioactive elements for our power cores? I certainly believe we did. So we can tell them we're ready to transfer. What will you give us in exchange for radioactives? Before we help you, we require certain information. I am going to ask. I'm going to interrogate him a little bit. I couldn't quite make it out, Captain. Could you please repeat? Uh, that's interesting. So basically, you have to give them the radioactives, I think, for communication to work. So let's We're transfer. initiating transfer of radioactives, Captain. Now, as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores, there, that's much better. Power ratings are climbing. Life support is coming back into the green. Deep radar systems and sensors are now online, and I can scan your vessel. What the hell kind of Wait ship is minute. that? <laughs> Just who are you, are you? Captain? <laughs> so we've got a few options. We can say I need you to explain some things or I'm Captain Snow of the Starship Friendship. So it's included how we've typed our ship's name. Uh, we are the survivors of a star control science research team to the Vila star system. I think we're going to open up. Let's be a little bit diplomatic with him. Star control science mission, huh? <laughs> Captain, I served as a star control officer during the war aboard several cruisers in the Corward Front. And if there'd been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. I'm just going to assume that this is correct and that the mission was highly secret. Hmm. You know, come to think of it, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush-hush operation near Andresynth Space. The Vela Star System. Yes, that would be the right direction. So, Captain, if you say it's true, how do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? And why are you here? What do you want from us? I mean, let's be honest, reasonable questions. Uh, return to Earth to give you the techno technological secrets of the precursors and to help you fight the hierarchy. I mean, that's what they that's what the intro told us we're here to do. Ah, fight the Urquan. Win back our freedom. I remember having such thoughts myself once, long time ago. That was in the first years after the defeat, when it was still terrifying to look up and see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. Though day and night we gazed up at the impenetrable wall as though the sheer power of our hatred would pull it down. 
But over the years, I spent so much of my time struggling down on the surface, under the shield, and then later up here trying to keep the station alive that I'd forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. Whoa, whoa. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power, offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. Captain, your offer is intriguing. It's tempting to think that with your advanced precursor technology, we can somehow crack the Earth's slave shield and reassemble the Alliance to attack the hierarchy. And this time, win the damn war. Consider the consequences if you should fail. The Urquan won't just punish us here on the station. They'll exact a gruesome retribution on the surface below as well. Before I commit this station to helping you attack the Urquan and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated, I have to make sure that you and your ship have what it takes to oppose the hierarchy. I'll make you a deal. If you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of that threat at least, I will seriously consider your offer. So we've got uh, we've got some options. Let's get some more info before we go in guns blazing. After the Urquan erected the slave shield around the Earth and established this space station, they decided to leave a contingent of combat ships close to the Earth to keep watch on our planet and confirm that they were obeying the Urquan slave laws. I'm certain they're still out there on the surface of the moon because we can pick up a constant stream of alien broadcasts. Okay, so we we have a. Uh direction of travel um we, we could ask him again but i think i think let's just go to the base be careful captain there are probably a dozen spathy eluders and ill wrath avengers down there on the lunar surface i don't know why they haven't come after you yet but when they do you'd better have your weapons armed and your thrusters burning hot yeah so a bit of advice so uh before we head in we'll do a quick save before we go in for the moon as well so i'm gonna try and keep a bunch of different save slots i might save over some of the earlier ones at some point uh right okay let's navigate to the moon and see what's going on down there so we have the option to we have the option to do a scan again we're just going to do auto scans we can see there's a bunch of minerals that's usually there's not much point i think in picking up gray minerals but if we're having to go down to a planet's surface anyway we may as well bring something back with us so we're going to dispa uh, dispatch <laughs> dispatch there we go uh and we can actually see there is the base there and then there's a bunch of drones just moving around so i'm going to pick up these minerals before i go to the station uh, we can actually shoot them down as well i imagine if we bump into them that's probably not the best thing for our health let's go around there uh is that going to fill up our quota oh we can get a couple more uh, before we go back to the station and investigate that there we go we are completely full up so let's complete the objective here report from surface we have discovered an alien base and have explored its interior. The installation must have been abandoned many years ago, but great care has been taken to make it appear active. Life support systems are functioning, fusion generators are full out output, and robotic construction vehicles have been programmed to roam the lunar surface, bulldozing moon dust into random piles. In addition, we have found the installation's hyperwave locked in transmit mode, endlessly playing the same alien recording. Although we cannot translate the message, our Xenotech Ensign Rigby believes the message is some kind of alert or mayday broadcast. The base is filled with useful materials and equipment. We will scavenge as much as we can and bring it aboard immediately. End of report. There we go. So now our job is to go back to Hayes and let him know let him know what we've what we've discovered about the moon. No wizards found there, unfortunately. Have you dealt with the base yet? We certainly have. <laughs> so we have to, I think one thing I appreciate about appreciate about this game, and it's something fun you see in later games where you have dialogue trees, is you can be really like sarcastic and glib. Um, or you could just be kind of on the straight and narrow. I think I'm going to be honest with him, though. Don't 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 feel the need to start being sarcastic or potentially alienating people. I'll be darned. 
For all these years, we've been listening to their incoherent broadcast, and we never even guessed. Captain, listen closely. Long-range sensors show a ship closing on this station fast. Our computer identifies it as Ilrath, Avenger class. I think you've got a fight on your hands, Captain. Your best bet is to wait until you have point-blank range. Captain, it's jamming our signal. By the fetid breath of the dark twin, Kazan, a human and an alien starship. How fascinating. When I intercepted that Urquan drone and learned that an unidentified starship had approached Earth, uh, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the hands of a human. Humans are prey animals, weak and helpless. But here is a human in an armed starship and therefore in direct violation of the Oath of Fealty. I am sure our masters, the Orquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery when I present them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. So, uh, wonderfully charming uh, person. I really, one of the things I really appreciate is how the font is different for different alien uh, species as well. So we can be a bit more confrontational. Where the hell did you come from? It'll be a pleasure blasting your ugly face out of the stars. Surrender, foul alien creature, or you will be annihilated. Or, look, let's be reasonable. We can coexist peacefully. I think that's too funny not to pit. <laughs> you must be either a naive child or a hopeless fool. In either case, it makes no difference, because soon you will be dead. So straight to it, we're going to be heading into the combat mode now. One interesting piece of advice he gave us is you want to engage them at point-blank range. Uh, we might see that that's probably not a good idea. But we are going to fly away, and we're going to... Oh, I want to try and pound away with some missiles from a distance. Yeah, you see, they've got a flamethrower, so we probably didn't want to get into point-blank range. And there we go. What a beautiful sight, Captain! I haven't seen an Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco! I guess you've shown that you can handle yourself in battle, Captain. So my last reservation about helping you has been dissolved. I will commit this station to helping free Earth and defeat the Urquan. We may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're going to try. So the obvious first step is to get the precursor equipment and software over here so that we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. But then what, Captain? So yeah, then we have a few options. We will proceed to kick some major alien butt, or trust me, I have a plan, a really good plan, but for now it must remain secret. Or we'll slowly build our strength, unify an allied star fleet, and bring the Urquan to their knee equivalents. That seems like the most rational plan to me. A sensible plan, Captain. Let's get to work. Good luck. By the way, Captain, I think we need a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. And since it was your idea, it's only fair that you get the honor of naming it. So, what will it be? So there is uh, the Empire of Snow, which I think will probably give a miss, or the United Federation of Worlds, which feels like potential copyright infringement. Um, the Concordance of Alien Nations, which is a bit clumsy. I think we're going to go for the new alliance of free stars. Okay, that sounds pretty inspiring. So be it. The new alliance of free stars. Now, Captain, I expect the configuration process for the star base to take at least two weeks, so let's get to work. I have good news to report, Captain. We have successfully integrated the precursor technology from your ship into our fabricator system, and as you can see, We've already begun minor repairs on your ship, patching up some of the micrometeorite holes. We noticed that your ship does not have an emergency warp escape unit, so our engineers rigged up some for you and each of your escorts. Now, you should be able to escape from a bad situation with the touch of a button, but there is a cost, however. The unit gulps up five fuel units each time your precursor ship uses it. Also, we now have a limited capacity to make modifications to your ship, to refine starship fuel, to build additional combat ships, and to train new members of your crew for the flagship and any ships you acquire for your fleet. Captain, I know you're eager to get to work, so I'll be brief. If you have any questions how this starbase works, 
what resources we need, or just some background information on the galaxy, don't hesitate to ask. So, uh, we are going to follow up on some of that bookkeeping and a bit of lore exposition in the next episode, but I think that's a good place to set off. We've had our first combat, we've uh, completed our first set of missions, uh, we have uh, named the uh, force that will be resisting the Urquan Masters, and we have a ship that's ready soon to go venturing into the galaxy. I hope you've enjoyed this, I hope you've had a good day, and I will hopefully see you next time in the stars. Goodbye. Farewell, Captain.